is a collection of Predator vs. Predator figures from Jurassic World, and we're going to be comparing all of them against each other. The first two figures to face off in this collection is this Spinosaurus and this Battle Damage T-Rex. Let's check out the Spinosaurus first. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, so this one's actually pretty hard to find nowadays. It's got the huge front arms. It's got a long and narrow snout with a lot of teeth. And this figure is quite a bit larger than its opponent, the Battle Damage T-Rex. This figure is a bright orange color. It's got Battle Damage slashes painted all over its body, even right on its face and on its chin. Now this T-Rex has tiny arms compared to the Spinosaurus, but it's still got the same jaw chomping action. Next up for the verses is this T-Rex versus this Allosaurus figure. Let's start with the T-Rex. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Battle Damage T-Rex. It's got a darker orange body than the T-Rex that we just saw. And you can turn the battle damage on and off with the click of a button. And overall it has some pretty cool detailing and darker shading. Now let's see what's different about this huge Allosaurus figure, also from Jurassic World Dominion. Now this figure also has battle damage on the side, but you can even open it up and move the ribs to show the stomach underneath. Now this Allosaurus is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it still has an awesome button for jaw chomping and sound effects. Up next for our Predator competition is this Jurassic Park Utah Raptor versus this new Dino Trackers Endoraptor. Let's first check out this Endoraptor. It is super reflective. It's a dark blue color. I think it might be just around the same size as the Utah Raptor, but it's got some really cool actions. First, you can move its arms for some sound effects and a jaw chomping action. And it's also got a button on its back for more jaw chomping action. Now let's see how this super old Utah Raptor holds up. You can see that little Jurassic Park tattoo on its leg right there. Now this figure used to be battery operated, but unfortunately since it's so old, it doesn't work anymore. Like many of the vintage Jurassic Park figures, it has a soft rubbery skin, and it still has a chomping action when you press down on its tail. Next, let's go with a Carnotaurus versus an Albertosaurus. The Albertosaurus is a little bit smaller than the Carnotaurus, and it has much brighter coloring. It's got the orange stripe running down its side and the green body, and the tail twists back and forth to control the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's check out this bigger Carnotaurus figure. This figure is dark brown with a gray underbelly. It's got even smaller arms than a T-Rex does. And you'll notice that the Albertosaurus arms are a little bit bigger. And just like the Albertosaurus, the tail swivels back and forth to move the head and for a jaw chomping action. For our next verses, let's grab this other Carnotaurus figure versus this Suchomimus. Let's start with the Carnotaurus. This figure is a bit smaller than the darker Carnotaurus that we just saw. The coloring overall is a lot more simplistic. There's not anywhere near as much shading. There's a little bit of white underneath its chin and some dark coloring on its neck and the top of its head. And the actions are a bit more simplistic too. There is one button at the top of its back for some sound effects. Let's compare that to this bright yellow Suchomimus figure. This Jurassic World figure stands a little bit taller than the Carnotaurus figure. It's got a huge spine that runs all the way from the head down to the tail. And just like the Spinosaurus, it has a long and narrow snout with a bunch of teeth on the inside. And this figure has two actions. The first is a jaw chomping action and the second is a tail swinging action. Our next two predators are this huge Scorpios Rex figure and this even larger T-Rex figure. Let's start with the T-Rex figure. It's got a light brown body with the darker coloring along the top and you can move all its limbs and it has the single button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now the Scorpios Rex has a few more features. First off, I love the detailing on this figure. There's some bumps. You can see this huge ridge running down its back. It's got these tiny little spikes on its elbows. And of course, it's got the poisonous quills on the end of its tail. And it still has two action buttons. The first moves its jaw and check out those super awesome teeth. And the second button moves its arms for slashing. Our next two predators are first a Carcharodontosaurus versus a Cryolophosaurus. The Carcharodontosaurus is definitely a little bit bigger, but the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow than the Carcharodontosaurus. Comparing the size, the Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit bigger, 
and the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow color. It's got movable limbs, and you can use the tail to swing the head around. And the Carcharodontosaurus, though it's not as bright, it still has some bright orange running down its back and on its neck. And instead of the tail as the action button on this figure, there's a button on its back for a chomping action. Right here, we've got a Metriacanthosaurus versus an Allosaurus figure from Jurassic Park. Let's check out this vintage figure first. Now this Allosaurus looks quite a bit different from the new Jurassic World figures. It's got a different head shape and a slightly different body. But the cool thing about this figure is that there's multiple battle damage parts that you can take off of its body. Check that out and even on its tail too. Look at all that battle damage. That is super cool. Now let's compare that with the Metriacanthosaurus. I believe this is from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom era. It's pretty bright in color, and it's around the same size as the Allosaurus figure. And this one doesn't have any battle damage, but it does have an action button on its back to control the jaw. <laughs> Before we continue on with the rest of the bin, let's actually open up this new Hammond Collection Concavenator. All right, now I think I only have one other Concavenator figure in my entire collection, so I'm super happy to add this one. It looks like it has quite a few different colors on its body. It's mainly got this blue, and there's some bright orange, brown, light tan, and then a very dark red right around its eyes. And since it's a Hammond Collection figure, it doesn't have any action buttons, but its body is super poseable. You can bend it at all of its limbs and joints. And its neck and head is especially poseable, which I really like. All in all, I think this figure stands up to the quality of all of the other Hammond Collection figures. Next up for our Predator versus Predator, we've got another Carnotaurus versus an Allosaurus. The Carnotaurus figure is quite a bit larger than the Allosaurus, so let's check this one out first. Now this figure has a bright orange body with the gray underbelly. It's got the tiny little front arms, just like the figure we saw earlier. And it also has the tail that you can move back and forth to move the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's see what's different about this Allosaurus figure. I think this one is even brighter in color. It's got the yellow and two tones of blue. It's got bigger front arms than the Carnotaurus figure. It's also got a tiny little row of spines running down its back to its tail. And this figure has two action buttons. The first operates the jaw and the second moves the arms up and down. The next two predators are this Dilophosaurus versus the Scorpio Venator. These figures are around the same size, but you'll see that the Dilophosaurus is a little bit longer. Now this Dilophosaurus is the basic edition, so there is no action button. You can move the limbs a little bit and you can activate the frills, but sadly, that's pretty much it. Let's see how that compares against the Scorpio Venator. This figure is pretty brightly colored as well and you can move all of the limbs, but this figure does have an action button. When you press down on its back, it activates the chomping action. Check out those sound effects too. Next, we've got the Seatz Mikurarum versus the Irritator. Between these two, the Seatz Mikurarum is definitely the larger dinosaur. It's got tons of spikes on its head, running all the way down to its back. And like many of the other figures we've seen so far, you can move the tail back and forth to move its head and chomp its jaw. Now let's check out its competitor, this Irritator. Although it's a little bit smaller, it still has some really cool coloring with the two tones of blue on the top. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around as well. Although, you have to open and close the mouth manually. Let's keep on going. For our next verses, we've got a Ceratosaurus versus an Indoraptor. And see how much longer the Endoraptor is compared to the Ceratosaurus. This Endoraptor is the basic edition, so once again, there are no action buttons that you can press, but you can still move its arms, legs, and its tail. And it's still got some awesome spikes on its body. Let's see how the Ceratosaurus is different. It's got a dark green body with some black detailing on the top. This dinosaur seems a lot more bulkier in size. And of course, it's got an action at the top of its back for roaring and sound effects. This is the Baryonyx versus the Amber Collection Raptor. I think the Baryonyx is a little bit bigger, but this Raptor is so much more brighter. Because this figure is from the Amber Collection, there's a lot more attention to the coloring 
and the limbs can be posed in many more different ways too. This figure is perfect for posing on a display shelf. Now let's check out its competitor, the Baryonyx. Because this figure isn't from the Amber Collection, there's not as much that you can pose on its body. But the cool part about this figure is that it has an action button on its back. Check out that chomping action. Now let's compare two very different dinosaurs. This is a Pteranodon versus an Allosaurus. This Pteranodon figure has foldable wings that you can open up and it's probably a foot in length from wingtip to wingtip. And it's got a button on its back to flap the wings too. Plus, you can open and close its mouth manually. Now let's see this Allosaurus figure. This one is pretty simplistic in color. It has the gray on the sides and then the yellow detailing all along the top. Of course, it's got the iconic ridge right above its eye. And on this figure, there's one single action button for the jaw. These next two figures are smaller. I believe this one is called an Elephrosaurus versus, if I remember correctly, the Rugrops Primus figure. The Elephrosaurus has a long and narrow snout and is mostly tan, it's got some brown as well. But this other figure, it's got darker coloring as well. And you can move its tiny little arms and open and close its mouth. Up next, we've got two different raptor species. This first one is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. And this other one is, I believe, an Amber Collection Velociraptor. Just like many of the other Amber Collection figures, it is a lot more poseable than many of the normal figures. And they did a pretty decent job with its coloring as well. And the pyroraptor has some decent detailing. You can check out all those feather designs right there. And the coolest part, I think, about the pyroraptor are these huge feathers right at the top of its head. And next, we've got a Jurassic World miniature T-Rex figure versus a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Both these figures are pretty old, but this Velociraptor is the oldest. It's got a spring-loaded chomping action, and it features some pretty unique coloring that I don't think I have another Velociraptor that's colored like this. Now let's check out this other miniature T-Rex figure. This specific figure comes from an older line from Jurassic World. I think it was actually made by Hasbro. So it's got some battle damage right there on the side. And on this figure, you can move the tail back and forth and side to side to operate the jaw and the head. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today, we are checking out my collection of Jurassic World Predators versus herbivores. Let's get started with these brand new ones that I just bought. Here is a huge one. This is the Isla Sorna capture pack. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, here is our Jurassic World Jeep and the Parasaurophilus. With this Jeep, there's actually a button you can press that shoots out the seat. And then you can see that there's a missile that it shoots too, just like this. That's super cool. This is a super awesome dino hunting playset. Really cool. All right, up next, we've got a Jurassic World Legacy Collection Velociraptor. Let's get this out of the box. All right, so here is the brand new Velociraptor. I don't think I actually have a Velociraptor with this type of coloring. Plus, this Velociraptor has a slashing action with its torso. Look at that spinning motion. That is so cool, it's spring-loaded, so it bounces back and forth. That is really awesome. All right, up next, we've got the Pachycephalosaurus. I love the coloring on this one. It's got that dark blue with the gray. Let's get this out of the box. This is a super cool herbivore. You definitely don't want to get headbutted by this dinosaur. Check out this action move. Spring-loaded head. That is so awesome. And right back here, we've got the Cosmoceratops. That is so interesting. Look at all the horns all over this one's body. Let's get it out of the box. Wow, I love the way this dinosaur looks. It looks like it's wearing a crown almost. And look at the horns on the side too. And this dinosaur has an action as well. Check that out. When you wiggle the tail, the head goes up and down. How cool is that? All right, I know you've been looking at this one. This is a giant Velociraptor. Look how big this figure is. It's probably, oh, I don't know, maybe three feet from tail to head. 
and it's actually pretty heavy too. This dinosaur has a stomach compartment right here, so you can actually feed this dinosaur littler dinosaurs or whatever you want, and it'll go down the throat all the way into the stomach where you can open it up and get those toys out again. That is so awesome. And look at the size of these claws too. Right in the back here, we've got the great Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look at the size of this dinosaur. Look at the size of its body. That is a huge neck and face. And of course, there's the action button for roaring. That is so cool. There's so many teeth in its mouth. And of course, you can wiggle the tail and it'll move its head back and forth. Up next, with a super long neck, we've got the awesome Brachiosaurus. Look at that interesting bump on its head right there. That is so cool. This figure doesn't have any movable parts, but it is super realistic with its coloring and its texture. That is so cool. And one of the next huge dinosaurs in this haul the great Indominus Rex with battle damage. Look at all those teeth and the awesome battle damage on the side that you can turn on and turn off. There we go. Right up here, we've got a Stegosaurus with a gray blue coloring. Look at that tail swiping action. That is so cool. And you can adjust the head too. Here's one of my favorite dinosaurs, the Carnotaurus. That is super awesome. It's got a little battle damage on its head. And with the tail, you can move the head. Here's what I think is one of the scariest predators in Jurassic World. This is the Scorpios Rex. It's got loads of teeth in its mouth, super sharp claws, and look at this poisonous tail. Those quills on its tail are poisonous, so you better watch out for those. Here is a super bright dinosaur. This is a predator. It is the Sucomimus. Look at that long mouth with all those teeth. Kind of like an alligator, really. And look at that fin all along its back right there. Right over here is an herbivore. This is the Ankylosaurus. And look at all that armor plating. Here is a scary looking predator. Look at that red all along its neck. This is the Carcharodontosaurus. This is a super cool looking dinosaur. See all those spikes along its back? That is super awesome. Right over here, this predator looks kind of like an alligator too. This is the Sarcosagus with all those teeth in its mouth and this red scaling all along its back and then the green bottom. All right. We've got a bunch more predators and herbivores in here. These two are both Carcharodontosauruses. And look at the difference in coloring too. I think this one's my favorite because I love this orange right along the top of its body. But these are both super cool dinosaurs. Right over here, we've got another herbivore. And look at the horns on this. It kind of reminds me of the horns of a bull, kind of. This is a Nasudoceratops, and it's got an action button in the back. It can whip its tail back and forth. That is super awesome. And it's got a button on the top for swinging its horns around too. Watch out for those horns. All right, let's keep digging. Ooh, this is an interesting looking herbivore. This is a Calovasaurus. I love the coloring on this the yellow on the top and the dark blue on the sides. And you can move the head up and down and the tail and all the legs too. Uh-oh, better watch out. Here's another predator. It's the Baryonyx. This is super cool. Check out that chomping action. Here 
here is another herbivore. This is a very uniquely colored dinosaur. This is a Zuniceratops, and it kind of reminds me of a Triceratops, you know? See those two horns in the front right there? That is super cool. I've got some smaller herbivores in here. Let's check these out. Wow, these are all so different from each other. This is a Chialingosaurus. Look at those spikes on its shoulder too. How interesting is that? This little one right here is a Protoceratops. It looks very small and it might be a young Protoceratops, but it is super cool. This orange dinosaur is a Gallimimus. Look at that long neck and the long tail. I bet these dinosaurs ran really fast. And this little dinosaur is a Triceratops. See, got the three horns on its head right there. But wait, we've got some more predators in here. Look out, it's the Endoraptor, one of the sneakiest and smartest dinosaurs out there. Let's check out these. This is a baby Brachiosaurus. You can open and close its mouth and move its neck up and down. And this is another giant Stegosaurus. It's got that tail swinging action. Those spikes are super big. Wow, that is so neat. Here comes another predator. This is the Spinosaurus. Look at that huge spine along its back. And then all those teeth right up front. All right, we've got a few more dinosaurs in here. This huge dinosaur figure is a Pentaceratops. And check out these action buttons. Those are some massive horns on its head. Right back here, we've got another Paraceropholis. And this is an older one. This is actually from Jurassic Park. And it's got a running action too. How cool is that? Super cool. We've got just a few dinosaurs left. This dinosaur is called a Cynoceratops. And look at the size of that one horn on its head in the very front. That is humongous. All right, here's another predator. This is a bright red and green Velociraptor with jumping action. Check that out. Here he goes, ready and go. All right, these are our final three dinosaurs of the Predator versus Herbivore collection. This is a Styracosaurus. And look at all those horns, that is super cool. This interesting looking one is a Shringosaurus. Look at those huge horns right on the top of its head and the super long neck. How interesting is that? And our final dinosaur of the bin is the mighty Kentrosaurus with those huge spikes on its side. And if you pull this lever right here, it swings its spikes back and forth. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Indominus Rex. First up, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. This figure has a dark brown side and black top with a lighter underbelly, and it's got adjustable arms, legs, and a tail. And up front, I can tell that the plastic is a bit softer on its neck. The rest of its head is a hard plastic, and you can open it up way wide, and you're able to actually swallow smaller dinosaurs down to the stomach compartment. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got another super colossal figure. This is an Indominus Rex. It has the classic light gray body, and is pretty detailed with all the spikes and the spines. It's got some spines up there. It's got some behind its elbows. It's got those super long claws on its hand. 
And just like the T-Rex, you can adjust the arms, the legs, you can swing the tail around. But on this figure, you can also twist the neck too. Here is the next figure. It's another super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one has the light orange body with a lighter underbelly. And just like the Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex, the neck is actually a little bit softer. It's like a softer plastic right there. And you can move the arms, the legs, the tail, just like the other ones. And of course, this one has the stomach compartment for eating smaller dinosaurs. And we've got some brand new figures that we can open up first before we dive into the rest of them. This one is the PNSO Wilson the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is super detailed. Look at all that texturing on its body, all the various shades of colors. It's like lighter right here, there's darker shades. These are a lot more detailed than a lot of the Jurassic World figurines. But unfortunately, they're not as posable. Usually you can only move their jaw. All right, let's dig in. This first Tyrannosaurus Rex is the Battle Damage Edition. It has the light orange body. You can see that there's scrapes and slashes all over its body, even on its face and nose. And it has a fully posable body, plus the button at the top of the head for chomping. Over here, we've got an Indominus Rex, the Extreme Battle Damage Edition. With this one, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off. That's so cool. Each time that you press that button, it delivers a roar sound effect too. On the rest of the figure, the arms and the legs are fully adjustable. And there's a button at the tail that controls the jaw. Here we've got the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is light brown on the sides, dark brown on top, and the lighter underbelly. And the coolest part is the roar and shaking sound effects. Over here is the Jurassic World Chompin' Indominus Rex. This is a bit of an older figure. It's got the hard plastic on the back and the rubber on the neck and head. You don't see that too often nowadays. <coughs> and for the chomping action, you pull down on the arms to open and close its mouth. I believe this figure is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has one big special feature. Press this button on its back and it does a tearing action swings its head around and closes its mouth real fast. And there is also a secondary button that swings its tail back and forth. I believe this figure is a destroy and devour Indominus Rex, but you'll notice that it has some custom coloring. So this definitely does not look like your typical Indominus Rex. And this figure really pops out on my display shelves. My favorite part being those green eyes right there. Next up is the Stomp and Escape Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has two features. The first, when you press this button on its back, it'll escape from its face cage. Just like that. And the second feature is stomping. When you twist the tail, it stomps its feet up and down. Comes with sound effects too. Here we have a classically colored destroy and devour Indominus Rex. This figure is pretty detailed over its body. It's got tons of spikes on its back. It's got those spines right along its neck. It's got some unique coloring along its eyes, right next to those orange eyes. And this figure has a few different features. First, when you bend the legs forward, it'll actually point its head down. And when you bend them back, it'll point its head upwards. Secondly, there's a button on its back that's used for slashing. And finally, there's a button on its tail for the chomping and roaring. Here is an extreme battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is pretty posable. You're able to move the arms, the legs, and swing the tail around, as well as adjust the neck and open and shut the jaw by hand. But the coolest part is the battle damage that you can turn on and off, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And you can see it on both sides. 
Next up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has a more gray-brown coloring on the sides with a darker brown on top and the light underbelly and is adjustable just like many of the other figures and it has the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. Here is another Indominus Rex, but this does not look normal. This is a hybrid Indominus Rex. So this one has some pretty awesome and unique coloring along its body. It's the only Indominus Rex to have red on its body, I believe, as well as the gold on its arms and its belly. And this dinosaur has a few features. First is a hidden button that activates its spikes on its back. Secondly is the chopping action, which you activate by moving its arm. Here we have, I believe, another extreme chomping Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one though has the orange body with the brown coloring on the top with the lighter underbelly. And of course, that chomping button right on the top of its head. This is the Stomp and Chomp Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has the typical orange body with the brown top and lighter underbelly. And what I really like about this figure is that you use the tail to control the head and the whole front of the body for chomping and for roaring too. Here we've got a model Indominus Rex, which I don't see that many of. But what I like about these models is that they're so much more intricately colored and textured. Check out those spikes on its back. They're so small on all those little spines and all those little horn things right along its back all the way to its tail. And just like many other model figures, you can't adjust the arms and legs. Only the mouth can open and close in these. But these sure look epic on a display shelf. Next up is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is one of the few Tyrannosauruses that I have that are this cool green color with the black detailing on the top. It has that same button on the top of its head for chomping. And this T-Rex actually came with a baby T-Rex in the same pack. So these came together. Here is a smaller Indominus Rex figure with the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And while most of its body is that iconic gray color, it does have some gray green coloring along the top, which is different from most of my other Indominus Rex figures. Plus this figure comes with a chomping action when you move the tail. Way at the bottom here, I've actually got the T-Rex anatomy kit. Now I am missing a few pieces to it. It's really easy to misplace these, but it's really cool that you can take this apart to check out all the different body parts within. You can take the ribs out, you can see this muscle on its tail and the bone behind it, and you can even take apart this foot right here and see what's underneath. How cool is that? This is the Bashers and Biters Indominus Rex figure. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line, and it has similar coloring to the rest of them, a little bit darker gray on top, got the battle damage on the side, and of course you can move the tail to control the face. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, but I believe it is a juvenile or even a baby T-Rex. You can see it's got the mouth restraint on, because the humans are actually healing its leg. It's got a broken leg, so it's got this bandage around it. And this figure is very adjustable too. You can move all the limbs, even at the elbows. And of course you can move the tail and twist the head around and even open and close the mouth. This is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex. This is a lot smaller than most of the Indominus Rex figures, but it has quite a large face to it and it has a few features. The first is when you press this button on its nose, get some sound effects. And the second is when you move the tail, it opens its mouth to eat, and then you can press down on its tongue to clamp shut its jaw. And last of all, I've got a few small figures in here. Got a Lego Indominus Rex figure, which is pretty cool. It's the only Lego figure that I have in this bin at least. We've also got some miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex figures from Jurassic World. This one is green with a light underbelly. And the second one here is brown with a light underbelly as well. 
And I also have these two Indominus Rexes in this bin. The first one is white with silver, reflective silver on its top. And you can open and close the jaw. And the second one is a clear Indominus Rex. You can't move any parts on this figure, but I think it's pretty cool that it's see-through. Today, I'm showing you my ultimate collection of Velociraptor versus Baryonyx versus Carnotaurus figures. Let's get started with these brand new ones that I just bought to add to this collection. First up, we've got Baryonyx Limbo from the Camp Cretaceous pack. Let's open it up. This is so cool. This is actually the first of this Baryonyx that I have in my collection. It's got a lime green body. It's got a darker green along the bottom of its back, and it's got some brown detailing on its neck all the way to the top of its head. You can move all the limbs and the tail on this figure, and there is a slide lever action for roaring and the sound effects. Next up, we've got the Velociraptor from the Jurassic World Attack Pack. Let's check it out. This Velociraptor has some pretty unique coloring. It's got a dark blue body and a dark red detailing along the top, which is pretty unique. I don't know that I have another figure colored like this. And here we've got another Velociraptor, but this is actually from the Hammond collection. Let's open it up and check it out. This Velociraptor figure is even darker than the one that we just saw. It's got a dark green body with brown detailing on the tail, all over the back on its legs, and it's still got the lighter underbelly all the way to the chin. And since it's a Hammond Collection figure, you'll notice that it is a much more poseable than a lot of the classic Velociraptor figures. You can move basically every limb on this figure. Let's dig into this bin now, and we're gonna start with the Velociraptors over here on the left. The first one here is Velociraptor Delta from the Amber Collection. You'll notice with all these Amber Collection figures that they are very poseable, just like the Hammond Collection figures. And Velociraptor Delta here has some bright blue coloring with a lighter underbelly. This is Velociraptor Blue from the Amber Collection. Very poseable, just like the last one. You can move the tail and all the limbs. And of course, it's got the iconic blue stripe all the way down the body on both sides. This, I believe, is Velociraptor Echo. This is also from the Amber Collection. It's got the light underbelly, a brown body with some darker striping, and the black top, too. The next Velociraptor from the Amber Collection is, I believe this one is called the Tiger Velociraptor? I can't quite remember. Let me know down in the comments if you remember. I also forgot to mention earlier that in all the Amber Collection Velociraptors, you can actually move this claw up and down, just like real life. This last Velociraptor from the Amber Collection is Velociraptor Charlie. This figure has a lime green body with darker green detailing all over its back and tail. It's got this headpiece attached to its head, and just like all the other ones, it is very poseable and adjustable, and you can stand it in any way you want on your shelf. Let's see what other Velociraptor figures we got in here. I've got these smaller ones. This bright red Velociraptor is actually spring-loaded on its legs, so you can spring it up into the air, which is really cool. It's also got some pretty bright and awesome coloring, too. This other Velociraptor is also spring-loaded in the legs, so you can spring it into the air. And it's also got some bright coloring too. And of course, I've got Velociraptor Blue in this smaller figure with battle damage on the side. Right over here, I've got some Jurassic Park Velociraptors. So these figures are some of the oldest in my collection. You can see the Jurassic Park tattoo on their legs on both of them, but they've both got some different coloring. This is an orange and red Velociraptor. And this one, which I'm sure you've seen before, is brown with the black striping all over its body. This Velociraptor is pretty normal looking. It's got the brown body, a little darker brown on the top. But my favorite part is that it's got some bright green eyes. This next Velociraptor figure is another spring-loaded leaping Velociraptor. 
This one is also super brightly colored. It's got the bright blue on the sides with the darker blue along the top. Here is another Velociraptor figure with muted colors. It's got the gray body with the dark blue detailing along the top and some soft orange eyes. This is another version of Velociraptor Blue, but this one is the spring-loaded leaping version. So just like the others that I've shown you, you can bend down on its legs and it'll spring up into the air if you let it go. And of course, it's got the iconic blue coloring. Here is a basic Velociraptor figure from Jurassic World. It's a lot larger, but the limbs cannot move as much and it's not as versatile. Even the jaw cannot open and close, but it's still got some pretty cool coloring, the orange body, brown detailing, and yellow eyes. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World, but this is Velociraptor Blue. It's got the soft green blue body with the iconic blue stripe down on both sides of its body and the yellow eyes. Oh, uh, you know what? I almost forgot these super colossal figures right here. This first Velociraptor is black around most of its body, but it's got this brown striping down the sides with some yellow speckling that's kind of hard to see on camera but it's also a little bit on its arm as well. It's got some super amazing colored eyes. And of course, this super huge jaw that you can open up all the way to feed it miniature dinosaurs down to its stomach compartment. Way back here, we've got the super colossal Velociraptor blue figure. This super colossal figure is very similar to the Velociraptor that I just showed you. It's even got the same amazingly colored eyes. And of course, it's got the iconic blue stripe down both sides of its body. Pretty adjustable with its limbs. And of course, it's got the stomach compartment down from its throat all the way down to its stomach so you can feed it miniature dinosaurs. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for all our Velociraptor figures. Now let's move to the Baryonyx figures right here in the center. The first one is the Baryonyx figure from the Hammond collection. So you'll see that this figure is very poseable and adjustable with all its limbs. Plus it's got a little more detail than most of the other Baryonyx figures. Next up, we've got the Baryonyx with the battle damage on its body. You can see a huge slash on its neck. It's got some on its leg as well and I think that's the only battle damage that's shown on this figure. But it's also got the button on its back for the chomping. This is an older Baryonyx figure from Jurassic Park. So this figure is a lot older, and as you can see, it is designed quite a bit differently. But it also has an action that when you move the leg back and forth, the head twists. This is a brighter Baryonyx. It's got a light gray body with white, dark blue and bright blue detailing on the top of its head. And this figure comes with a slide lever action for different roars and sound effects. This next Baryonyx figure is similar to the one that I opened up at the very beginning of the video, but it has a slightly more forced green color and it has two tones of brown on the top. It's got the light brown in the back and the dark brown along its neck, and then the light brown right along the top of its head once again. This Baryonyx figure came out during the Fallen Kingdom era. It's got the light brown body with the blue detailing along the top and the super bright orange along the top of its head and nose. Here is another Baryonyx figure from the Jurassic Park series. So this figure, once again, is a lot older. It has the bright yellow underbelly and some light brown with black specks along the top. And like the other Jurassic Park Baryonyx that we saw earlier, it has the action that when you move its leg, its head twists back and forth. Here is our final Baryonyx of the bin. This figure has a light brown side and underbelly. It's got the dark blue detailing all along the top from the tail to the head. And it's got the bright blue reflective coloring right along the top of its head and nose too. There's only one more dinosaur left in the bin and that is the Carnotaurus figures. Let's start with the super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. This figure has the iconic clay red sides with the lighter underbelly and the brown top. It's got the two huge horns on the top of its head. It's got a little bit of battle damage on the right side of its face. And of course, it's got a huge jaw that you can open up all the way to feed it miniature dinosaurs. 
This Carnotaurus figure is from the Fallen Kingdom era. It's got some darker red coloring with some purplish coloring along the top. And this Carnotaurus has a different action button than all the rest that I'll show you. It has a chomping action that moves its neck as well. This, I believe, is the Control and Conquer Carnotaurus. It has a much darker red, pretty much brown coloring along its body. It's got a gray underbelly and a dark brown top. And with this figure, the tail controls the neck so you can twist it back and forth, as well as a button on its tail for chomping. This next Carnotaurus, I believe, might be from Camp Cretaceous, but I can't quite remember. It's got a lighter red and slightly orange coloring along the side with the brown top and the gray underbelly. And this figure also has the tail that controls the head as well as the button for chomping. I've also got some smaller Carnotaurus figures in here that are not from Jurassic World, but are a bit more generic, but they differ quite a bit more with the coloring. You can see that this one's got some green coloring with it. Still got the iconic horns though. And this figure has some bright orange along its face. You won't see that with the Jurassic World figures. And this figure looks a bit more like Jurassic World with the red and the spines. But this figure has some ginormous horns on the top of its head. That's really cool. Here we've got the Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's even got the broken horn on the top of its head. This figure is colored entirely different too. It's got the dark green body with the orange detailing along the top. So it looks like they started to mix it up for the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. And last of all, we've got the Jurassic World Chompin' Carnotaurus figure. This figure looks more like a baby Carnotaurus in a lot of ways. It's got some huge eyes that you can actually blink with by pressing the button on the top of its head. And it's got a button on the bottom of its tail for a chomping action. to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a bunch of old Jurassic Park versus Jurassic World figurines. A lot of these figures you can't find anywhere except on like eBay and they might be actually pretty expensive in some cases. Plus, I've even got some brand new Jurassic World figures that we are gonna open up as well today. So let's get started. First up of the brand new dinosaurs is the Zungaripteris. This is a flying dinosaur. So let's open it up and check it out. So this flying dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. It's got yellow wings and a yellow body, and then it's got the brown on the very top and on the neck and on the head. You can see there's a bit more bright coloring right on its horn and right along its eyes and nose as well. Let's see if you can open up the mouth. Yep. You can adjust the wings and you can move the neck around as well. And the DNA barcode is right there. Next up is the Moros Intrepidus. Let's check it out. This dinosaur is from the Jurassic World Ferocious Pack and it's pretty adjustable. You can see it's got a soft green color throughout most of its body. It's got some white and then the orange tail at the back. Let's see if we can open up the mouth. Oh, it's really difficult, but you can. And its joints are pretty articulated as well. You can move the arms, the neck, you can move the legs and the tail too. Here we've got the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's check it out. All right, here is the Atrociraptor. Just put batteries in it, so let's see what it can do. You can see that there's a button up top here and a power switch. Let's turn on the power and let's press the button and see what happens. Oh, that's interesting. So the, so the body does move. It does like this little wiggling thing. If I put it down on the table, I bet it would walk. That's pretty interesting. I do love the coloring on this as well. It is a bright orange color over most of its body. It's got the brown on top and a little bit of yellow detailing on the legs. It's pretty cool. And last of the brand new dinosaurs is Velociraptor Charlie from the Camp Cretaceous set. 
All right, another Velociraptor to add to my huge Velociraptor collection. And it's got an action button right here on the top for some slashing. Let's check that out. Looks like it doesn't work too well. Yeah, the slashing action seems like it kind of gets stuck a bit. But still, this is a pretty cool Velociraptor. It's pretty articulate with all its joints. I think this will look great with all my other Velociraptors. All right, let's dig into this giant bin of old Jurassic Park and Jurassic World figures. This is the 1993 Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got a soft body all over. Its legs are made of hard plastic, as well as its arms are hard plastic that swivel. And this T-Rex has a chomping action. When you squeeze the soft stomach, its mouth opens and closes. It's a little old, so it's not working quite as well as it used to. This is pretty cool. This is a huge T-Rex. Here we've got another vintage Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex also has a soft body, except for its legs is a hard plastic, as well as its arms again, that you can swivel back and forth. And with this T-Rex, instead of squeezing the stomach, you can move the tail and it moves its head around. That's pretty cool. This is a super old dinosaur figure. This is the Stomp and Strike T-Rex. This is one of the older Jurassic World figures. And how it works is set it up like that so it's in the roar position. And then you activate the tail and it comes swinging down for a chomp. That is pretty cool. Here we've got a super special and pretty hard to find Jurassic World Hybrid Indominus Rex. Let's check out the features of this dinosaur. First, with the arm, if you pull that, then it has a chomping action. Second, there's a hidden button right here that when you press, it shoots out its spikes. I'm super glad I have this Indominus Rex and I love the gold on the underbelly too. That is something you don't see very often. Here is another vintage Jurassic Park dinosaur. This is the Utah Raptor. See, it's got the JP-22 right there on its legs. It's got some huge claws on its feet that are adjustable, and you can move the legs and the arms. And with this Utah Raptor, you can actually pull the legs back to lock into place, and then there's a hidden button underneath its tail that you press to swing them forward. So it's like a chomping action when it's standing up. Here is a vintage Jurassic Park Allosaurus. This dinosaur has a hard plastic body all around, and you can see that some body parts actually come off to reveal battle damage underneath. Look how detailed that is too. You can see like intestines in there. You can see some bone on the part that you take out. And there's even other parts that you can take out too. You can take out part of its leg, see its bone and its muscle right there. And you can even take out part of its tail too. Let's check out that bone underneath. And it just clicks right back into place. Here is another hybrid dinosaur. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line. This is a hybrid Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see those spines right on the top there. You can actually hide them and the ones right next to its head. And then when you press this button right here, they'll all slide out. That's pretty cool. Plus, that button doubles as a chomping button. This has some pretty unique coloring on it, too. This one back here is a Jurassic Park vintage toy. I believe this is a baby T-Rex, if I remember correctly. You can see it has some battle damage right there on the side. And like many of the other vintage figures that I have, its body is soft, aside from its hands and its feet. It's got a mostly brown body with a darker brown spots and stripes as well. Back here, we've got a special edition Ankylosaurus. This one's pretty special because it actually has this additional shell that you can remove to reveal the normal shell. And look, it's even got some battle damage right there on the side. So this is pretty cool. And you just click it right back on. And this Ankylosaurus has an action as well. When you move this leg back and forth, you can see that it sticks its head out and it swings its tail too. Here's another Jurassic World T-Rex. You won't see the JW tattoo on its leg because this one was colored differently. So this one is a red color with black spots and stripes all over. 
and it's got the chomping action button on its back too. This is pretty cool. Right over here, we've got another vintage Jurassic World figure made by Kenner. This is the Chasmosaurus. It's got that huge shield in the front. It's got the three horns on its head. Plus, with this figure, when you move the leg, it moves its head up and down for a roaring action. This is a Ceratosaurus with battle damage. It's got the red on the top with the black stripes and the rest of its body is a light tan color. And it's pretty articulate with the arms and the legs. Plus, with the tail, when you move that up and down, it opens and closes its mouth. Here we've got an even smaller T-Rex. This is also from the old Jurassic World toy line. It's got the battle damage on the side. Arms and legs can move. And with the tail, you can control the head. You can go up and down, back and forth, and you can open and close the mouth all in one. Right over here is a big winged dinosaur. I believe this is a Pteranodon. You can fold in the wings, make it easier for storage. And it's got two buttons on its back. One flaps the wings, and one opens and closes the mouth. Here we've got a bunch of classic Jurassic World Velociraptors. I have a ton of these. See that these two are tan with the green striping on top. This one is a dark green with the black striping on top. And with each of them, you can move the arms and the legs. Can't open the mouth or close them or anything like that. But these are actually some of my biggest velociraptors, which is pretty cool. This is the Ankyloranodon, and it's a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got a light color over most of its body and the bright red striping right on the top, all the way to the tail. See, it's got some spikes or feathers or something like that on the top of its head, on its back, and on its arms, like wings as well, as well as right on the tip of its tail. And with this figure, you can move its leg up and down for a roaring or chomping action. Here we've got a basic Jurassic World Spinosaurus. You can't open and close the mouth or adjust the neck on this one and it is smaller than a lot of the other Spinosaurus figures that I have, but it's still got the same iconic coloring as my other Spinosauruses, with the red on the top, the white in the middle, and the green on the bottom, as well as the red right around its eyes. Next up, from Jurassic World, we've got a Dilophosaurus that is super brightly colored with orange and green and yellow. This is a super colorful dinosaur. Plus, with this figure, it comes with an action. When you move the tail up and down, it swings its head up and down. Over here from Jurassic World again is a Ceratosaurus with pretty unique coloring. It's got brown over its whole body and then a light orange detailing on its back all the way to its horn and the action button on its back activates its roar and its jaw. Next up, from the Jurassic World toy line, JP63, we've got a classic Baryonyx. This dinosaur is super thin looking, and with its right foot, you can move it back and forth to twist its neck back and forth too. Here is another hybrid dinosaur from Jurassic World. This looks to be like a Triceratops and Stegosaurus hybrid. Plus, it's got the battle damage right there on the side. This dinosaur is super bright with a light blue on most of its body and dark blue detailing on its feet and in the front too. And this dinosaur has an action. When you move the tail, it swings its head forward for a stabbing action. This one is a similar hybrid as the one we just saw, but with different coloring. You can see it's a dark green with some tan detailing on its body with the same battle damage. I believe this is also a Stegosaurus and Triceratops hybrid with the same stabbing action too. This classic Jurassic Park figure, I believe is called an Amargo Spinus. It's got some bright red accenting on the top of its body. It's got some horns right there on its neck and the rest of its body is black and tan. Let's check out the actions on this dinosaur. You can see when you move this leg, it activates those spines to go up. It also moves those spines on its neck and it opens and closes its mouth for a roar too. So it's doing three things at once. I see a few more Jurassic World Velociraptors. 
see we've got the dark green with black striping. We've got a brown with gray striping. We've got a special one over here that is a bright green with red striping. And this one actually has a few actions on it. It's got a battle damage button right on its side and the tail activates the mouth too. I think there's one more back here. Yep, here is another Velociraptor also with the battle damage on its side and the tail chomping action. This figure is another vintage Jurassic Park figure made by Kenner. This is Apache Cephalosaurus. You can see it's still got the restraint around its waist, but when you take that off, you can see that there's actually some battle damage revealed underneath, which is pretty cool. And as you're probably guessing, since it's Apache Cephalosaurus, the action button that you press right here is for the headbutting. But this figure is so old that it'll actually fly off. As you can see, it's kind of broken. But that's still a pretty cool action for Apache Cephalosaurus. Over here, we've got some small Jurassic World Indominus Rex figures. This one's the smallest, so let's check this one out first. You can see that there's some battle damage on the side. And just like those smaller T-Rexes we saw earlier, you can use the tail to control the face to open and close the mouth, to move the neck around and all that. This slightly larger Indominus Rex has battle damage as well, but you can open and close this one actually. Um. And then you can just pop it right open. Plus you can use the tail for the chomping action too. Here's a big dinosaur. This is from the Jurassic World Legacy Collection. This is the Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. It's got the green body with the red and white stripe. And of course, you can move the neck around and activate the chomping with the button on the top of its head. Here's an even smaller Spinosaurus, but this one looks a lot different. This is an older Spinosaurus figure from Jurassic World. See that it's blue along most of its body. It's got some gold coloring on its belly and then the bright red spine. And like the small Indominus Rex and small T-Rexes that we saw earlier, you can use the tail to move the neck and open and close the jaw. We've got another big T-Rex. This is from Jurassic World. It's tan in color all over its body and it's got the button on the top of its back that activates the jaw. Here is another vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx. This is another super slim dinosaur again. You can see it's got the orange striping on the top. And like the other Baryonyx from Jurassic Park, when you move this leg, it twists its head around. Here we've got a super weird looking dinosaur from Jurassic Parks. This is a Lycanops. Kind of looks like a saber toothed tiger in a way. It's got those huge fangs in its mouth. And the mouth is spring-loaded, so you can open and close it. This is from Jurassic World, and I believe this is the Proceratosaurus. You can see most of its body is a light tan color with some gray detailing on its back all the way up to its face, and it's got the bright red right on top of its face, too. Here is another Apache Cephalosaurus, but this one is from the old Jurassic World line. And you can see with the tail, that you can move its head up and down and back and forth. This is another Jurassic Park vintage toy, and it is, I believe, a Dilophosaurus. This figure is pretty small and pretty slim, but you can see those iconic frills right at the top of its head. Here are a few more Jurassic World figures. This, I believe, is another Pteranodon with wings that you can fold up or extend. It's got the action button on its back for flapping its wings. And with this figure, you have to manually open and close its mouth. There is no button for it. This figure is a Jurassic World Mosasaurus. You can see it's got the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. Plus with this figure, you can use the front fins to activate the jaw. We've got some more Jurassic Park vintage figures in here. This first, I believe, is a Velociraptor with red on the top and orange on the sides. This other figure I have in my hand is a baby T-Rex. You can see with this baby T-Rex that you can actually move the leg around. You can see that it's broken in a way. It did originally come with a bandage that you used to cover that. But all in all, this is a pretty cool figure. 
Here is another hybrid Triceratops Stegosaurus from Jurassic World. It's got the battle damage on the side, and just like we saw with the other figures, you can use the tail for a stabbing action. Here are two other similar Jurassic World figures. Both of them have the tail chomping action. You can see this one is a T-Rex with battle damage, and this one is a Spinosaurus with battle damage. Let's check out those chomping actions. And last of all is the classic Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Let's check it out. It's got the chomping action in the front, and you can adjust the arms and the legs too. Today we're going to be checking out a collection of some of my scariest carnivore dinosaurs from biggest to smallest and we're going to be putting them up over here to check them out side by side. So let's get started with the biggest one, the Indominus Rex. This figure is absolutely massive. It is larger than a lot of my T-Rex figures and this is actually the battle damage edition. See it turns red when you press the button, which is really cool. Plus. The rest of the body is very adjustable. You can move all its arms, its legs, you can adjust its neck, and it even has a button on its tail to activate the jaw. So let's go ahead and set the Indominus Rex down at the edge right over here. Moving on, let's see what the next largest dinosaur is. Probably the Giganotosaurus. This is another super large figure. It's got the green body with the black detailing all over, and it has a few actions actually as well. The first action is a button on the top of its tail that activates the swinging action with its entire upper torso. And there's also a button beneath its tail to activate just the jaw alone. All right, let's put this Giganotosaurus down right next to the Indominus Rex. And look at the size difference even between those two as well. That's pretty crazy. All right, next up, let's see. I bet it's one of the T-Rexes and it's probably the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure has some awesome coloring and shading and is the most poseable out of basically all my T-Rex figures. And an interesting feature of the Hammond collection is the realistic parts of its mouth. It's got these flaps on its side that are rubber, so they actually move around pretty realistically. The tongue is also rubberized as well. Let's put this Hammond collection T-Rex right next to the Giganotosaurus. All right, I bet the next biggest one is this other T-Rex figure. This is a Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. It's got some brand new coloring. It's got the orange brown color and some gray detailing on the top. And this is actually an extreme battle damage T-Rex. You can press the button to reveal the damage on its side, just like that Indominus Rex over there. So since this is the next biggest T-Rex, let's put it down right next to the Hammond Collection T-Rex. All right, looking pretty good so far. Next up in size is this Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the largest Allosaurus figure that I have, and it actually has some battle damage on the side. Let me show you that. Right here, you see it's hidden completely right now, but then you can click it down to reveal the ribs, and then you can even lift those up to reveal the intestines inside. This is really cool, and the only Allosaurus that I have that can do that. Plus, it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this Allosaurus down right next to the extreme battle damage T-Rex. Let's see what's next biggest in size. I think it might be this Endoraptor right here. This thing's pretty large. It's got the all black body with the iconic gold stripe down its side. And this one actually has a few actions. You can see there's a little button on its tail right there to activate its arms. And there's a button at the bottom of its tail to activate its jaw too. All right, let's set this Endoraptor down next to the Allosaurus. That Allosaurus is quite a bit larger. All right, let's keep digging. I think this Carnotaurus might be the next largest size. It's got some battle damage on its nose and it is the darker brown version of the Carnotaurus. And it has the action button on its tail to activate the jaw as well. Let's set it down. 
You know what? I think it might be larger than the Endoraptor, so let's go ahead and have them switch places real quick. There we go. That's looking better. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure, but this one is smaller than the one that I just showed you, and it is a bit more brightly colored. It's a brighter red, it has the light underbelly, and then the black detailing on the top, and it has an action button on its back instead of its tail to activate the jaw. All right, let's set it down. Right next to the Endoraptor. Let's see, I think the next biggest carnivore in this collection is a Tarbosaurus. And this is definitely a scary looking carnivore. Check out that red underneath its chin and those red eyes too. And all those spikes, those are massive. Let's put this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Check out all those dinosaurs we have so far. Super cool. All right, let's see, next in size, maybe this other Allosaurus figure right here. This Allosaurus has a slide lever action on its back so you get a bunch of different sound effects with it. Can get a growl all the way to a roar. All right, let's set this dinosaur down right next to the Tarbosaurus. And it is quite a bit smaller than the Tarbosaurus. Next up, I think, is the Giganotosaurus. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus, so a whole lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier, but it has the same coloring and detailing. And it has a sound effects that you can hear that you can activate by pressing this button up top. All right, let's set it down right next to the Allosaurus. They're actually pretty similar in size, so it might be a little hard to tell who's larger, but I think it's still the Allosaurus. Next, I think, is a Pyroraptor figure. This is the new Jurassic World Dominion version, and it is the basic version as well, so you can't open and close the jaw, but you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail a bit. Let's set this down right next to the smaller Giganotosaurus figure. <laughs> Next up in size in the scary carnivore collection is the Mega Raptor. This thing has some super bright coloring. You can tell that it is a feathered dinosaur. You can see some feathers on its legs, on its tail, on its arms. It's pretty cool. So let's set this down right next to the Mega Raptor. <laughs> next up is this slightly smaller Endo Raptor, a bit smaller than the earlier version that we saw, but it has the same coloring. And this one actually does not have any action buttons, but it is super poseable. Let's put this down next to the Mega Raptor. Next in size, we've got the basic Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This has the white body with the brown striping all over and those bright red eyes. Let's put this down next to the smaller Endoraptor. Here is an amber collection Velociraptor. I can't remember which Velociraptor this is, but it has the brown coloring with the darker striping all over its body. Looks like we're running out of room on the edge there, so we're gonna create a new row right up in front here. Next is this much smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an earlier version of the Indominus Rex compared to this one way over here on the edge, and look at that size difference too. And actually, I think this smaller Indominus Rex has a slightly more blue tone than the super large one. It's pretty cool. Let's put this down right next to the Amber Collection Velociraptor. For the next smallest scary carnivore, I've actually got this brand new one from Jurassic World Dominion. This one I believe is pronounced Aquilmosaurus. Let's open it up. So this is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur and it's actually an extreme battle damage addition that you can see on the sides. Just click this button and there you go, you reveal the damage underneath. Plus you can pose its neck and I think you can even open and close its mouth too. There we go, that's pretty cool. Let's put this down next to the Indominus Rex. The next up in size of scary carnivores is this extreme battle damage Pyroraptor. Just like the dinosaur that we just saw, there's a button on top that activates the battle damage. Plus, the rest of its body is poseable as well. And check out the size difference from this Pyroraptor to this basic Pyroraptor right there. A huge difference in size. Let's put it down right up front here. All right, now we're getting down to the really small ones. Here is a super small Atrociraptor figure. It has the same color as the basic Atrociraptor that we saw earlier, but is a whole lot smaller. So let's put this right next to the Pyroraptor. And I've actually got one more Atrociraptor figure in here with totally different coloring. 
This one is a bright orange with tan stripes on its body, and it's got some yellow evil looking eyes. So let's put this right next to the smaller Atrociraptor right in front. And it looks like we've got a few Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue striping down both sides of its body. So let's put Velociraptor Blue right next to the orange Atrociraptor. And this other Velociraptor that I've got in here is a brown and yellow Velociraptor. It's pretty similar to Velociraptor Blue, but different coloring and it's got some reflective green eyes. That's pretty cool. Let's set this one down. And finally, I've got some super small Jurassic World scary carnivore figures in here. Let's put these on the table and check them out one by one. I think the first largest is probably this Baryonyx. I think it's a Baryonyx figure. It's all green in color, so not a whole lot of difference with the coloring, but it's got a decent amount of texturing. Let's put this next to the larger Velociraptor. Next up in size, let's see, I think is probably this Velociraptor figure. This one has two different colors on it, even though it's so small. Oh no, actually three. It's got a pink tongue and the two tones of gray on its body. That's pretty cool. Let's put it down next to the Baryonyx. Next up is the Carnotaurus figure. I got this one pretty recently in a pack and you can actually open and close its mouth. Let's set this one down here. And last of all is this Baryonyx figure that actually came in the same pack as this little Carnotaurus. Let's put them side by side and it is a bit smaller. All right, we're finished. Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out all of my Jurassic World Dominion dinosaur figures. Let's get started with this classic ginormous T-Rex figure. This Dominion T-Rex has a dark brown body with the black along the top. It's got the barcode scanner right on its back right there. And it's got a pretty thick neck and a pretty big head compared to a lot of the other T-Rex figures. It's got some evil yellow looking eyes. It's got a mouthful of teeth, plus the mouth actually has a throat, so you can actually fit some miniature dinosaurs in there. It doesn't have a stomach compartment, but as you can see, you could probably fit a few small dinosaurs in there. And the coolest feature of this figure is that it's got a button on its tail to activate the jaw, and you can move the tail to swing the torso around too. So it makes it look really lifelike. Next up, we've got a Mega Raptor figure. This is one of my newest figures that I bought fairly recently. It's pretty awesome. It's got those huge claws in the front. It's got a red and a dark blue body. It's got some feathering detailing along its back and along its head as well as some white detailing right along its face. It's got the barcode scanner right on its back. You can twist the tail. The tail also has some cool looking feathers which is pretty unique. And you can adjust the arms and legs of this figure. Plus there is a chomping action when you press down on its body. Got some sound effects too. That's pretty cool. This, I believe, is the Majungasaurus figure. This dinosaur has a lighter underbelly, a dark green side, and the brown detailing along the top. It's got some cool ridges right along its head, as well as the super tall orange ridge right on the top of its head. And you can move the arms and legs of this figure, as well as swivel the tail around to control the neck. And with this figure, you can actually adjust the standing pose by moving its legs. See how it leans down when you adjust the legs? That's a pretty cool feature. Not that many other figures that I have work like that. And of course, it's got the button on its tail to activate the jaw. <laughs> this wild looking dinosaur is the Ichthyovenator. This dinosaur has a dark green body along its underside and on its sides, and it's got the super bright green detailing right along its spine and on its tail too. This is a pretty unique tail. This dinosaur has a long snout with a bunch of teeth inside. And the best part is that this dinosaur has an action when you press down on its body. It does a chomping action. Here we've got a ginormous Allosaurus figure. But not only that, this is an extreme battle damage Allosaurus. I think it's the only one I have that is a battle damage edition. This Allosaurus is almost as big as most of the T-Rex figures I have, which is unusual for an Allosaurus figure. 
and it's pretty adjustable. You can swivel the tail all around, you can move the legs and the arms, and there's a button on its back to activate the jaw too. But the coolest part is the extreme battle damage on its side. You can hide it completely, and then you can spring it open, it's spring-loaded, and you can even lift up the ribs to check out the insides underneath. I think that's its stomach right there. And it's pretty squishy. That is really cool. And you can close it up and hide it. This is the Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the dark red eyes and the brown striping, which is actually very similar to this super colossal Atrociraptor that I have back here. Look at that, they're pretty similar. On this little figure, its mouth is closed and you can't open it. But on this super colossal figure, it is a lot more adjustable. It has those same dark red eyes, the striping all along its body. And this super colossal figure has the stomach compartment so you can actually feed this huge figure smaller dinosaurs. This is the Rajasaurus figure in the dark blue edition. As you can see, most of its body is that dark blue gray color. It's got some white detailing along its neck on its arms and on its chin. It's got some big old spines right along the top of its neck. And this figure actually has a chomping action when you press down on its body. I've noticed that they're doing this chomping action for a lot of the new Jurassic World Dominion figures. And I've actually got another Ragosaurus figure with different coloring here. This one is dark brown along its body and undersides. And it's got the dark blue just along the top and along those spines right there got the horn on the top of its head and that same chomping action when you press down on its body. Moving along, we've got the Sound Surge T-Rex figure. This figure is a lot smaller than most of the T-Rex figures I have, but you can swivel the tail around, you can move the legs and the arm, and you can open and close the jaw manually. You'll see that the tongue and lower teeth are not colored though, which is kind of a bummer, but it still has a cool feature that when you press down on the button, you get some T-Rex sound effects. Speaking of T-Rexes, I've got this huge, super colossal T-Rex figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This figure is ginormous. Check it out. It has similar coloring as the first T-Rex that we saw in this video, but it has some cool features as well. Since it's a super colossal T-Rex, it has the stomach compartment, so you can feed this dinosaur, smaller dinosaurs, down its throat all the way to the stomach. And that is pretty cool. Next up, we've got a Giganotosaurus figure. I believe this is the Strike and Roar figure. It comes with two awesome functions. The first swings its torso and its head around for that chomping action. And the second button on the bottom of its tail opens and closes the jaw for roaring. That's pretty cool. That's some pretty wild movement. Over here in the corner, you may have already noticed, I've got another Giganotosaurus figure. This one is the Super Colossal Edition, and it is huge, just like the other Super Colossal figures. It's got the dark green body with black detailing. It's got the huge jaw with some really pointy long teeth. And since it's a Super Colossal figure, it has the stomach compartment for feeding smaller dinosaurs. Next, I've even got some brand new figures that we're gonna open up on camera. This one was a bit damaged in shipping, as you can see. This is the Velociraptor Blue and Atrociraptor pack. Let's check it out. Here is the Atrociraptor Blue pack. You can move its neck up and down. You can open and close its jaw, as well as move its arms and its legs. And here is the super bright orange and white Atrociraptor. And this Atrociraptor has the same movements as Velociraptor Blue. You can move the neck up and down, you can open and close the jaw, and move the arms and legs too. And it's got the barcode scanner right at the top of its back too. This is the Sound Surge Carnotaurus figure. It's pretty basic in design and not a ton of coloring. It's like almost completely red. It's got a little bit of white underneath its chin. And like the other Sound Surge figures, its tongue and its lower teeth are not colored, which is a bit of a bummer. But let's check out those sound effects that you can activate by pressing this button on its back.
Here is the basic Pyroraptor figure. This figure is a dark red color with some black along its tail and its legs, as well as some black detailing right along its face too. And on this figure, you can only move its arms, its legs, and its tail a little bit. <laughs> Speaking of Pyroraptor, I've got this ultimate uncaged Pyroraptor. Let's open it up and check it out. Here is the uncaged Pyroraptor, and this figure is huge. This Pyroraptor has sensors all over its face and on its chin, so you actually can do quite a bit with this figure. There's a training mode, there's a play mode, there's a wild mode. So let's check it out and uh, see what kind of sound effects it comes with. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think it's in wild mode right now. Because it's roaring a lot at me. All right, now its eyes turn blue. Let's see what happens when I touch those sensors. Wow, there's so much you can do with this thing. You can even train this Pyroraptor. <laughs> Which it's not, it's not obeying me right now. So it's obviously not trained right now, but that's pretty cool. I could spend a lot of time on this figure gotta check it out for yourself. Over here we've got the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor figure. This figure is also battery operated. Let's see what happens when you tap the top of its head. So it's got some sound effects and it can open and close its jaw too. That's pretty neat. Over here we've also got the Rowdy Roars Dilophosaurus figure. This one is also battery operated. So let's check that out. Let's see what sound effects this one can make too. That's pretty cool. Here is another Giganotosaurus figure. This is the Sound Surge Edition. So it's a bit smaller than many of the other Giganotosaurus figures. And it's fairly adjustable. You can open and close the jaw and move the arms, the legs, and the tail. And of course, it's got the sound effects too. This is the Extreme Damage Dimetrodon. It has a light green body and the super bright spine on its back. And it's got the battle damage right on its side that you can turn on and turn off with the click of a button. Here is a smaller Carnotaurus figure. This one is dark green and orange, and it is pretty adjustable. You can move the neck, you can open and close the jaw, and you can move all the limbs as well. <laughs> We've got a couple small Atrociraptor figures in here. Here is the classic white with brown striping Atrociraptor. And over here, we've got a light tan Atrociraptor with brown striping that's in a crawling pose. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got an extreme battle damage Velociraptor. This Velociraptor has a white underbelly and sides with the dark blue on top and the extreme battle damage right on the side that you can turn on and off. And this final dinosaur is an extreme battle damage Coelurus. It has the dark green body with the red legs, tail, and head. And it's got the extreme battle damage just like the Velociraptor that you can turn on and off. Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a bunch of dinosaur figures that were released as part of the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line. I've got tons of these dinosaurs, so let's dig in. First up, we've got some new ones that I just bought that we're gonna check out first. The first one is the Endoraptor. So this Endoraptor figure is probably medium sized, not as big as most of the T-Rex figures. It's got the all black body with the gold striping right along the side, just like the movies. And this figure is super poseable. You can move basically every joint in its body as you could in real life. You can open the jaw, the neck, the arms, the legs, the tail. It's got two joints. It's got some quills on its back and on the top of its head too. And of course, it's got those red eyes. Next up, we've got the Dino DNA Lab Kit with the Dimorphodon. Let's open it up and check it out. All right, here we go. So here is the Dimorphodon. It's gray in color, and then it's got that maroon purplish coloring on the bottom of its wings. 
and it's pretty adjustable. And we've got the Dino DNA kit. Comes with the slime too. Let's go ahead and put this in. All right, here's the slime and it goes into the canister. Oops, didn't quite fit. And then you stick this dinosaur skull into the slime. And there you go. It is now on display. Plus, you can actually open up the canister to let the goo slide out of the side. That's pretty cool. And next up, we've got another Dino DNA Lab Kit. This is the Velociraptor Pack. So let's open it up and check it out. Here is the Velociraptor. It looks like it is in a sneaking pose, crawling along the ground. It's got a light green color and it's pretty poseable with all its limbs and jaw. And of course, you've got the DNA kit right here. Let's put that slime in. And finally, let's put the skull in. Looks like this kit comes with the same skull. And there we go. Exact same as the other one. It's got the opening on the side to let out the goo. And you can close it back up and put it on display. Next up. We've got the Legacy Collection Extreme Chomping Spinosaurus. This has the dark green body and the iconic red along the spine and the face too. And of course, it's got that chomping action. This is the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. This dinosaur can be controlled by moving its tail all around to control its neck, its head, and its jaw. Right over here, we've got the giant Mosasaurus figure. They've actually come out with a new one since then that has different coloring, but this is the original one for Fallen Kingdom. This one has a lighter blue coloring on the side and the top compared to the newer one and the white underbelly. And on this figure, the tail actually doesn't move. That's only with the newer Mosasaurus figures. Here, we've got the basic figure of the Endoraptor. It has the same awesome coloring as the one we opened up earlier, but the limbs cannot move around as much. As you can see, you can only move them somewhat. You can't move the elbows, you can't move the knees. It's kind of stuck in this crawling, sneaking pose. This is the Action Attack Suchomimus. It's got a bright blue color on the bottom and the sides and the yellow detailing on the top. And it's got one action button on its back for chomping. Next up is the Roarivore Allosaurus. It's got the gray body with yellow detailing on top and you can move the arms and the legs and there's an action button on its back for chomping the jaw. This is the Roarivore Ceratosaurus. It has a light yellow body with the black and red detailing on the top and the iconic horn right there on its nose. Plus it's got an action button on its back to chomp the jaw. Right here, we've got a basic figure of the Dilophosaurus. It's got the soft green body with the red frills. And you can open and close the frills and move the limbs a little bit, but they're not very adjustable. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World. This is a Velociraptor with the orange body and the brown top. And just like the Dilophosaurus, the limbs are slightly adjustable, but it's pretty basic. Way down here, we've got an extreme chopping T-Rex. This is part of the Legacy Collection, I believe. And it has the orange body with the light underbelly. It's got the button on the top of its head for chomping. Here's one that I actually haven't shown that much. This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex Anatomy Kit. As you can see, you can take it all apart and check out its insides. See, it's got, I think that might be the stomach. That's the intestines. You can see the muscle of the tail. You can see the bone behind it. And even on its leg that you can take off, you can take this apart and see what's inside. So there you've got the bone, you've got more muscle. It's pretty cool. This is the Action Attack Carnotaurus. It's got the dark red body, lighter underbelly, and it's almost like a purple color along the top with all of those bumps along its spine. And this dinosaur has a jaw snapping action. It's really fast. This dinosaur is the Action Attack Stegosaurus. It has a light blue body with a darker blue along the top, and this figure has a tail swinging action. Next up, we've got the Roarivore Sinoceratops. 
This dinosaur has some pretty cool patterning along its whole body. I really like that orange right on the top. And this figure has a head shaking action for roaring. This is a pretty big winged dinosaur. This is the Roarivore Pteranodon. This figure has a dark blue body with the red and white wings, and it's got a button on its back for the wing flapping. This is the Legacy Collection Velociraptor with the jumping action. The legs are spring-loaded, so when you press down on its body, it'll actually spring up into the air. And this is a super bright Velociraptor. I love the bright orange on this figure. Next up is the Battle Damage Triceratops. This is a smaller figure. It's green all over its body. It's got a little bit of light brown on the top. And most importantly, it's got the Battle Damage on the side that you can flip open and closed. Looks like we got a few more pteranodons in here. First one is a light gray color. It's got some dark blue detailing on the wings and on the face, and it's got a button on its back to flap its wings. And this second pteranodon is a dark green color with yellow accenting. And just like the other, it has a button on its back for flapping the wings. Here is another basic figure. This is Velociraptor Blue. This figure is about medium sized and it's fairly adjustable, but since it's a basic figure, you only can do so much with the arms and the legs. Over here, we've got the Roarivore Baryonyx. This has a light brown body with a dark blue gray coloring on top. And the coolest part is this reflective blue right along the top of its head. Plus this figure has an action button on its back for chomping and roaring. Here is another Baryonyx figure, but this one I believe was actually part of a Lava Surge playset. This one has the bright orange coloring on the top of its nose, while the rest of its body is light brown and dark blue gray, just like the other one. And of course, it's got the action button on its back for chomping and roaring. Here is the Roarivore Metriacanthosaurus. This has a green yellow coloring along the side and bottom with a darker green along the top and it's got a button on its back for chomping. Right over here is the Roarivore Triceratops. This has a clay red color with the brown detailing along the top, and it's got a button on its back for the roaring. This figure is the Roarivore Ankylosaurus. It has the dark brown underbelly. It's got some green detailing along its shell and the gray and the white spikes too. And this figure has the button for swinging its tail back and forth. Let's see how many battle damage figures we have in here. I think I found four. I think that's about it. Let's check them out. This first one is Apache Cephalosaurus, the green body and the orange top. And of course the battle damage right there on the side. Next up, we've got a yellow Velociraptor with brown detailing along the top and the battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. As well as another Velociraptor, looks like Velociraptor blue with the battle damage on the side. And finally, a green Herrerasaurus with the battle damage on the side and a little bit of orange brown detailing along the top. We've got tons of Velociraptors in here. Let's check these out. This first one is a blue and gold Velociraptor, and on its head is actually pretty reflective, which is awesome. Then up next, we've got the classic Velociraptor blue figure, and of course you can open and close its jaw and move many of its limbs around. Then we've got this red Velociraptor and this green Velociraptor. Both have movable limbs, and you can open and close both of their jaws too. Here we've got a few Dilophosauruses. This first one is light green with the yellow and red frills in the front. It's got some brown coloring on its back. And this second Dilophosaurus is a dark brown color with blue detailing on the back and its frills are white and like a dark green color. Next up, we've got the green Minmi figure. This figure has spikes all over the top of its shell for protective covering. And it looks like we've got a couple more Dimorphodons in here too. This one has the gray and maroon coloring, just like the one we saw earlier at the beginning of the video. 
And this figure is dark green and has orange and red coloring along its wings. That's pretty cool. I definitely like this coloring better. This, I believe, is a Protoceratops. It's got the light blue coloring with the yellow detailing along the top. Ooh. Here is another Jumpin' Velociraptor figure. This one is a bright blue coloring. And just like the other Velociraptor figure, you can press down on its body to bend the legs, and then you let go to let it spring up into the air. Next up is the Stiggy Milok Stiggy. This figure has the super hard head with the spikes right behind it and you can move its arms and its legs and its tail too. Mm. We've also got a few Gallimimuses in here. This first one is a blue-gray color with darker coloring along the top, and it has adjustable legs, arms, and a neck. This second figure is a bit different. Its coloring is a bit more detailed all over its body, plus it's got an action button on its back to run its legs. And the final one is a light tan Gallimimus with darker brown detailing along the top, and just like the others, you can move the legs, the arms, and the neck. This is the Legacy Collection Pachycephalosaurus. And this figure has the head ramming action. And last but not least is the Proceratosaurus. It's a smaller figure with a dark brown coloring with a lighter underbelly. And it's got that red detailing right along its nose. And you can open and close its jaw and move its arms and legs. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.